This is a second fight for YouTube. A couple of years back, I wanted to dive into the world of fixed wing drones. But unlike quadcopters, which can hover by itself, fixed wings are a bit challenging as they need to constantly move forward to maintain altitude. To start acquiring skills on the matter cheaply, I built a plane out of dollar store foam board with a borrowed design from Experimental Airlines Noob Tube. After a lot of reading, I put my knowledge to the test only to see my dream crashing. Unfazed, I give it another try only to see it crash once more. Although it managed to take flight only for a few seconds, those few seconds gave me a glimmer of hope. I should be able to fix it. Now, I revisit the build once more, but this time, decided to learn the basics. After all these years, I learned that for you to learn something, you'll just have to roll up your sleeve and start getting your hands on the subject. First, I have to build the wings, which is actually just a folded foam board. I removed some of the paper, also cut a few strips of foam. I sanded one edge for gluing later on. I used a piece of lumber to fold straight the foam. And added the two strips of foam to create the curve on the wing. The design details can be found in Experimental Airlines YouTube channel. I then glued the sanded edge and hold the form with the lumber. I also built the fuselage which is just a fancy name for the airplane's body. It is basically folding the foam board until it forms into a rectangular tube. Reinforcing it with a strip of foam glued inside and holding the form once again with a lumber. Also, I need to create the elevator and add in a rudder. I used a block to make sure they are perpendicular. Now is to mount the wings. The most important part of fixed wings is the center of gravity, or CG for short. Unlike quadcopters which has gyros and accelerometers to assist its balance, for fixed wings it is utterly essential to get the balance right. And for this I use kids modeling clay as weight and place the aircraft on two vertical pencils. The recommended CG is at 10 inches from the tip of the nose or one third of the width of the wing from its front. I then covered the nose with a cut out styrofoam. I also angled the elevator a little to give it an upward direction during the test. Now I have no idea of an unbalanced plane flight characteristics. For this I build more exact models and purposely unbalance them and subject them to a glide test. First is the tail heavy. followed by the balance and lastly the nose heavy I should obtain more information after this test okay number one tail heavy let's see how this plane performs The result was awful. It just pitched up, turned on its side, and crashed badly. Okay, number two. Just the right balance. It glided much better and landed safely. Oh, well, that looks good. At least try the third one. There you go. Number three. 
It traveled even further and glided good enough. Thus I decided my setup will be a little nose heavy. I guess it confirms the rule of thumb. A nose heavy plane will fly poorly, a tail heavy plane will only fly once. And now to add the electronics. I 3D printed the motor bracket, then mount the motor. The wiring is pretty much straightforward. You have a receiver with roll and pitch servos plugged in to channel 1 and 2 respectively. Channel 3 is throttle which sends PWM signal to ESC that drives the brushless motor. Now to solder the cables. I decided to mount the main electronics to a separate module and not on the fuselage for ease of access. Temporarily attach the components for testing and will later be rearranged to get the required balance. For control rods, I use marking flags and cut them to right lengths. Also use old cards as control horns. Now to test the throws. And also test the motor. I also reposition the battery to get that little nose heavy balance. Okay, uh, moment of truth. I have a prop that is 10 by 4.5 elevator, a little bit angled. <laughs> it's hard to control. Uh, there you go. It broke the prop. So this is it for today. Okay, so I made a mistake. I built an RC plane with a rudder and an elevator. So an elevator will pitch the plane up or down, but for you to turn your plane right or left, they call it banking, you need a rudder together with ailerons. Um, obviously, I don't have. So there is another way. They call it dihedral. It's like a V-shaped wing. So what happens is 
The rudder together with the dihedral will create banking, which causes the plane to turn. So without ailerons or dihedral, if you're moving that way, your airplane's nose will just shift, but your direction is still the same. So yeah, I need to have ailerons or dihedral combined with a rudder to make that turn. The reason I couldn't control the direction of the plane when I was at the field. I then decided to create a dihedral wing and also use a longer wing. Dihedral wings. I hope this works. And uh, cross fingers. It finally flew and at last can control the direction, but then I ran out of open space and panicked. This is what happens if you are learning how to fly and build at the same time. I have a broken prop, a little dent on the left wing, but I was able to fly, so I got a working aircraft now. Now let's find an open space. I'm still not confident in my flying. Don't really know if it's the build or my lack of skills in flying causing it to crash. The plane may need some fine tuning, or my skill in flying at least. I can't believe it, it's still alive. A lot of bruises, a lot of dents, but it just needs cleaning up and I can still play with it. I can still practice flying with this. All I have to do is fix a few stuff and I should be able to fine tune the center of gravity and practice flying with it some more before I move on to other models. Pretty robust. <laughs> I hope you find this video useful and check my other videos as well. Thank you guys for watching. Okay, so there's no deflection on the elevator. has a three and a half inch width so I cut down the length from 30 to 26 inches oh, not bad cut the width to 24 inches Four and a half inches width for both rudder and elevator and I also placed the elevator at the bottom of the fuse launch. I move forward the center of gravity to 9.5 inches from the tip of the plane. and the motor mount 
but the frame is still in, intact so I should be able to I should still be able to use this Thank you.